okay uh, let's continue the session in uh, database management system right uh, we know there are uh, some other functionalities as well you know uh, in software application development uh, users are expecting some critical requirements from the software application right so those critical requirements the burning requirements of the application that we call the functional requirements right so they those functions are essentials to work uh, essentials right to work the application well but uh, some functions which are not mandatory but they are nice to have right they do not hondai right they are nice to have it is not compulsory but for safe side right some some requirements uh, some uh, some uh, administration uh, activities uh, so those uh, features quite benefited right so something like uh, the protection especially the security right and the maintenance right so if the system get uh, vulnerable or get uh, some uh, issues right so then we have to get some backups right and uh, we have to restore them right so those uh, uh, for those operations right we need some uh, maintenance right uh, uh, and also to move the data uh, into a backup right so several features right are expected right especially you know the security right to uh, to apply uh, different security protocols right um, are needed uh, for some special applications like banking systems right uh, and health uh, health record systems right so these features are essential uh, for those cases but let's say uh, student management system document management system some are not much critical but these features it's nice to have right uh, if if these features are also there then it would be much better so then let's move to the next slide slide number 10 here we discuss uh, the simplified database system environment how the application it works uh, so when we are requesting some information from the database how this core is made right so let's see in this figure it describes right on the top user or the programmer is requesting some information over the application right so here you can see in the database system right uh, the application is inside right which means right uh, application program mean uh, the application that we have developed okay, okay? so then uh, from the application uh, it requests the data once the application is requested then if uh, some data are needed from the database then that request it goes to the dbms software which means for an example um, microsoft access or mysql or in microsoft uh, sql server right like that uh, from this uh, database server right it's request particular information right software to process queries uh, or from programs so then software to access stored data right so which means uh so we have to filter it out right if that uh, data are uh, granted to access for that particular user right or as data are available so those sort of filters made from the database right and uh, to access particular information right we have to um we have to access the stored database Right. or else let's say if we want to store the data right then we have to check right in this database 
uh, what are the constraints right what are the limitations right uh, what conditions are made uh, with these fields right if that informations are allowed to store right granted to store then uh, we can store the data right or else if we want to get some data right we can access uh, from the stored database uh, database and get the data right i think uh, it's clear to you okay so then let's move to the next slide slide number 11 okay so role of the database management system right the database management system receives all application request to translate them into a complex operations required to fulfill those requests right so dbms basically what it has to do is right so it it comes it received uh, so many requests right some are accept some are not accepted right so even though if the request is not accepted right so it's also managed by this database management system right for an example uh, uh, any unauthorized user is trying to access those information right by the dbms uh, issued to reject right so if the informations uh, if the information request is granted right so then the application should to translate what sort of information was requested so depend on the user's requirement sometimes the the request it, it's quite complicated right by this dbms right it's try to simply simplify as much as possible and then it proceed to the operation right it hides much much of data uh, databases uh, internal complex from the application program programs and users the truth is right we don't know about the operation of the application in the dbms right even uh, you know some uh, database administrators right they are not much aware uh, about the complexity of the application Right. that much of a uh, huge process is done by these applications but the main thing is we should to concern right what sort of data we should to store right and then uh, how we can make a query right uh, uh, if the application if the users uh, uh, data are quite complex right so then using different uh, uh, algorithms and uh, operations we can make them simplify and then we can put the data into several branches uh, like uh, several uh, sections right so to make them simplify right um so these operations everything is done by this dbms right understood so let's move to the next slide right so there are many different advantages in dbms right especially improved data sharing right which means uh, if you have some particular information right so if you want to share that data with someone else right uh, the dbms have the facility to grant it right so you can provide an account from dbms uh, to access uh, your information then they can access it right and the better data integration many software application have a facility right whatever the computer language that you used right it doesn't matter using this dbms it can integrate them together right for an example uh, an application that you develop using c language or c sharp java python php using any language it doesn't matter you can integrate your data or your database right with these applications together and uh, minimal data inconsistency right you know uh, we have a different type of data uh, for an example uh, simple letters capital letters right so that sort of uh, issues it's also might have some issues right uh, 
using these databases right we can enhance those issues right and uh, to make and the and we can make the uh, the minimal of the complexities right so it could be done uh, so improved data access you know uh, in uh, different database applications right it has different uh, uh, engines that we call different engines right according to our requirements uh, we can boost the to, we can boost to access this data for an example uh, uh, some database uh, some users need to access the data as fast as possible right uh, at that time uh, some engines available that we can do it uh, quite faster right uh, so that sort of enhancement would be done and uh, in, improved decision making you know some dvms systems have some automation right so the application itself uh, can uh, uh, develop some uh, uh, solution right uh, you know some tools were developed to uh, make it uh, simplified and uh, you know to develop to develop such a complex application right it also provides some certain uh, facilities right so those facilities are uh, provided by this application right so that decision is made itself right uh, increased uh, end user productivity right uh, you know we have different type of end user product uh, end users administrator uh, maybe uh, owner maybe clerk maybe um, uh, finance managers right uh, hr managers right and um, maybe uh, client right so these are a type of uh, end users right according to their different uh, requirements right so we can categorize the, the application or the dbms right and then uh, we can provide a productive solution right let's let's move to the next slide okay now let's move to the slide number 30 evolution of file system data management now let us assume uh, you are working in an in an organization right uh, so then uh, we have different different uh, department different different branches right so each divisions or branches uh, we have to share some documents right for an example uh, uh, log reports or ledger reports right we have to share with the different uh, uh, employees so what we do so we uh, from the authorized uh, uh, clerk or manager right uh, we request that data or file right uh, to the other branch right so they they will be granted to move this document or the file uh, with the others right so we have uh, so whatever the data we if we want to keep records uh, each divisions right they have their own documents set and keep records everything right for the future references as well as for the records right so uh, uh, let us assume uh, we don't have any computer systems in an organization right? so then everything is recorded in a book or else uh, in a document right in a printed document right uh, so then it is very hard to uh, operate right but somehow uh, organizations uh, do their best right uh, why to simplify their operations well so what they do is they keep uh, several documents or files uh, with different folders right and they are organized those document well right so in the manual system you know it's quite complicated right uh, for the branch managers or the authorized person right so they are inform uh, or they are instruct for their uh, workers or clerks 
right to organize those documents well right keep all these document in the folders right and uh, keep them in the cabinet right in a well organized manner then it is easy to access right uh, so same like when it comes to the computerized system right so we have to keep records everything right into the database right so then we can easy we can we can easily manage those contents right if we are well organized them then it is quite easy to organize so if you are an employee what you should do is right you have to convert all this file or file systems uh, into the database right so we have to get all these folder uh, files in the folders right uh, everything and then we have to put them into the databases file systems typically composed of a collection of file folders each tag and keep in cabinet right uh, organized by expected use right so that means um, so all the file systems in an organization or in a department right so we keep them with uh, files and folders with tags then it is uh, in the cabinet then it is easy to access same like when you comes to the databases right uh, so we can uh, if we have that set of records then what then it is uh, we can go to that particular folder or file right and then we can access uh, that relevant content so it is quite manageable right so i think uh, no issues at all then we can move to the next slide slide number 14 um, content of each file folder are logically related right? so which means for an example uh, if you notice in an organization um, some files are well labeled well tagged right and if uh, if the file is not sufficient uh, the space right so then uh, we have to get another folder right and we have to put that relevant files into the folder <clears throat> but from the previous folder we have to make a note right the the remaining contents are labeled in this folder and this file right and then uh, we can make a relation we can make a link so the, um, uh, and for an example uh, you know in finance branch we have uh, financial records in that uh, in that organization's employees financial information right salary information and all hr division they have their personal uh, personal uh, files right uh, some certificates their uh, recommendations right so those things are recorded in the HR division, right? But they are track all this information by the employee ID, right? But both divisions keep their records by the employee ID. Then it is quite easy to manage, right? So that's uh, that sort of uh, logical relation we can make between the files and folders, right? Uh, so when it comes to the manual system, uh, it is okay if we have less number of data set right uh, if you don't have a huge data right huge uh, documents in that organization then we can uh, manage those operations uh, day to day operations by manual system it doesn't matter right but when it come, you know most of the small organization or uh, small and medium level organization right when they are being uh, operate with their business operations uh, so they with time they are improving their business and then the operations get enhanced right so then they have to move for a well organized uh, system right so that's why companies they move their records into the databases so when it comes to the databases uh, especially the computerized databases right 
it is quite easy to manage right so data processing specialist right they are converting this this data into the what into the database systems so let's move to the next slide slide number 15 computer file systems uh, resemble manual systems right uh, you know uh, when we are comparing both manual system and computer system, they are almost same, nothing much different, right? Because if the computerized systems get failed, right? So then we have to operate them by manually, right? So at that time, we have to have an alternative process, right? Same like in the manual process, right? It takes time and uh, it is not made. Uh, efficient right so that's why we have to move into the computer system right then the uh, the manual process whatever we do right we can move we can easily move into the computer system as number of files increase uh, file systems evolve each file used its own application programs to store retrieve and modify data right you know different department they might access uh, those data in using different application for an example the same employee information right uh, access um, by the uh, HR division using different application and financial department they may access by different application but the, uh, but they are accessing the same data same storage so then updating, retrieving, storing, right? modifying these uh, data are almost same, nothing much different. Uh, and uh, uh, in best practices, most organizations, right, each different uh, individuals or departments, they keep their own records uh, for their maintenance. Right? Uh, so whenever they want it, so they can migrate or uh, they can merge uh, that relevant data with the centralized system right and uh, it can be synchronized right so those things are ad as, uh, such advanced modification it might uh, it might be done or it, it could be done right so probably those things uh, could be managed by the uh, data queries administrators so this is the evolution basically all over the world right so whatever the content we have right so we are um, uh, put them into the uh, uh, documents right or else uh, for an example uh, let's say if you want to send some particular document uh, or content uh, with someone else so what we do so we get that uh, content and put them into the folder and then uh, wrap it and then uh, we are mailing that uh, such document or the content to the other organization and they received and they are, they are processing right and whenever they want to respond for those requests right they do the same right so this is uh, basically a, a, a repetition Right or a continuous cycle, right? Uh, from uh, in the organization, right? From the beginning to end, right? It's, so it's basically never-ending process, right? So using this computerized system, right? It can be manual easily, right? So let's move to the slide number seventeen. Um, so problem with file system data management right uh, even simple file system uh, retrieved task requires extensive programming uh, in a third generation language right uh, you know uh, if you have small retail shop let's say a small business operation right so we don't want to uh, record everything right maybe uh, maybe a coffee shop right small uh, cafeteria right 
they don't have a huge uh, operation right, in their day to day operations so then it is not necessary to have a complicated system right because uh, their operation is so simple so then uh, developers uh, so then uh, as a it professional you should to know right uh, the benefit of the uh, computer systems computerized system right so if the um, operation is simpler simple the manual operation is simple and it is not worth to develop such software solution for the such an organization right so you have to decide that uh, decision right in advance uh, because you know uh, sometimes uh, even if we develop some sort of solution for them right uh, with timely they might need some uh, ad hoc requirements right uh, uh, different requirements it comes while they are using the application at that time if you if we are going to improve that uh, uh, improvements of the requirements then it take time right and it's really costly so then it is very difficult to manage by these uh, small organizations right so it is not worth to uh, implement such a system right as uh, changing uh, existing uh, structure is difficult right uh, sometimes you know some organization right their uh, structure is quite complicated uh, but uh, using the computerized system it is quite easy to uh, uh, move or so it can be done but the uh, basic operation it might uh, really complicated uh, so at that time so you have to decide right does it really worth to uh, address it right those issues uh, security features uh, difficult uh, difficult to uh, program uh, therefore uh, are often uh, omitted in the system uh, file system environment you know sometimes some organization right they are not really bothered about the security especially uh, it's start from uh, physical security like uh, computer doesn't have enough security right uh, the physical computer system doesn't have enough security so at that time no point to develop such uh, software security as well right even though uh, the, the physical computer doesn't have a security right uh, you, you can you can see uh, not not worth to address for the um, uh, uh, software securities right uh, even uh, some software securities Right. you have to install some uh, third party applications right the firewalls right certain applications need to be uh, deployed so sometimes the employee doesn't have enough budget to deploy those solutions right got it so those are the basic issues so let's move to the next slide slide number 18 uh, so basically as the file system limitations right so let's summarize them right uh, so requires extensive uh, programming right you know uh, some expertise or some expert uh, knowledge to develop such a software solution right some programs uh, to integrate your database and the applications together um, so it is quite difficult to add, uh, make some changes and hope um, requirements right uh, system administration is complex uh, and very difficult to address uh, uh, in some uh, manual systems right uh, difficult to make changes uh, to the existing structure right you know some organization their basic operation is, even it is quite complicated so at that time it is difficult to uh, solve such issues right uh, and security right uh, security issues right got it so then let's move to the next slide right data redundancy so this is one of the critical issue uh, in most organizations right why uh, data redundancy right you know um, uh, 
at the sometimes uh, uh, we don't know the record is uh, we already recorded uh, by uh, different user or else uh, in a different day right so we don't have a clear idea right, in the manual system at that time uh, sometimes we record uh, again the existing record into the ledgers or to the logbooks right then the same record is repeated right so repeated uh, maybe not once maybe a couple of times right so that issues that basically we call the data redundancy right so data duplicating uh, file uh, file system structure makes it difficult to uh, combine data from multiple sources right maybe you know um, uh, sometimes we have to keep records everything again and again but sometimes uh, we have to uh, you know uh, in a in a in a table or a, in a log sheet right uh, the same record we should to record from uh, from one field to the other but only few fields it might change right for an example uh, uh, a librarian who wants to keep records uh, who are the um uh, uh, readers or uh, uh, people who are the who are the people who lending books from the library uh, so sometimes you know uh, some uh, users have a privilege to lend a couple of books so what uh, a librarian do is right so he keep records everything about that particular person's record and uh, do only change uh, the book that person lend right the, the the book title right uh, and the reference number book reference number right uh, everything else right uh, we should to repeat into the next record right so that means uh, uh, you know uh, we are recording unnecessary information so that basically called it's also some sort of a data redundancy right um, right and uh, organization structure right the same records uh, it might record in a different location right that means uh, the same record right uh, it, uh, they might record in uh, different uh, branches or different uh, 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 departments okay. so then it is unnecessary right because uh, if we want to update that same record right so we have to go through all these department or to the divisions and then we have to update everything right so it's quite um, time consuming and uh, it's make more complex right um, so that's so that means uh, basically the data redundancy right which means the same record same data stored in unnecessarily in different places got it so let's move to the next slide so let's move to the slide number 20 now here uh, data inconsistency right so that means uh, you know uh, as i mentioned earlier if we are keep records the same records in different places right and the, so those records are not updated um, correctly right uh, maybe we don't have a, a clue right which recorded is uh, updated recently so at that time we it get a conflict of interest right uh, uh, you know uh, it it makes some conflicts right about the data right which recorded uh, which data is uh, recorded uh, recently or else uh, made some changes right we don't have a clear clue right so then it makes some complexity right some 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 complexities uh, and uh, data anomalies 
anomalies when uh, all changes uh, redundant data are not made correctly right you know as i mentioned earlier right so these records are recorded in uh, different places right and if you want to make some changes for a particular data for a particular record right so we don't know which record we should to re uh, change it first and second right we don't have a clear idea and how uh, and how these data make changes right so we don't have a clear reference right so so those are the issues in uh, uh, data anomalies right so it may have uh, with different uh, anomalies like updating anomalies right so that means uh, uh, to update our record uh, insertions right i mean uh, if we have some uh, new data and if you want to in input them into the database right how we can make it right uh, we don't have a clear definition right in the database uh, how we can in input right uh, so those are the issues right those are the issues right in the data redundancy as well as for the data deletion right which records we should to delete first right so that sort of complexities are there okay let's move to the next slide uh, slide number 21 right so in this uh, uh, figure you can get an idea uh, about the file system right uh, constraint uh, contrasting database uh, and file system right? so that means um, in different department right we have different records right and uh, using this dbms database database management system right we access the same data right um, but when we consider each departments right they keep those records in different branches right their own branches for an example right in database system uh, we keep records uh, uh, into the database right so what are the operations we have uh, the to keep the employees records customers records and sales uh, inventory accounts right and salary everything we have to put them into the database but data are existing in the databases right but when we compare uh, with the file management right files in the organization uh, each records we keep in different branches right because to make it simple right for an example the uh, personal department or hr department they have employees records right uh, those information not all the informations are necessary to have for the accounting branch or for the financial branch right it is not necessary right so we can have some reference id or reference uh, 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 process right to track that particular employee or particular data and then we can uh, keep records uh, all organize all over the organization right we can uh, keep on track right particular data or information right throughout the organization it could be done right i think uh, no issues right so then let's move to the next slide slide number 22 right so here we are going to discuss uh, to store that particular data right or information into the database system right so what sort of uh, requirements we should to fulfill right so there are five major uh, parts are needed to complete the database system right starting from hardware software people process sorry produce uh, procedures data right so let's talk about them uh, hardware right so hardware mean the physical devices right so that means we need uh, storage devices 
right? Like, uh, well, first of all, we have to have a computer system, right? In the computer system, you know, basically it has a processor, RAM, motherboard, right? Some several components, right? As well as the storage, the physical storage, right? And uh, the network connectivity, right? Uh, so, and then uh, uh, maybe uh, some sort of network structure, right? Why? Because uh, these data we might access from a remote uh, um, uh, location, right? Or else from a different computer system, right? So we are going to access that particular information, right? So then, uh, uh, basically, these are the uh, devices we call the hardware devices, right? And uh, software. So software we can divide into three different uh, categories, right? Uh, types, right? Which we call operating system software, right? Uh, uh, DBMS and application programs, or and uh, utility programs. Right? Uh, operating systems, I think you may know about uh, uh, different operating systems like Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Android, right? Uh, different operating systems right? and database of software as I mentioned earlier MySQL uh, uh, MySQL uh, SQL Server Oracle uh, MangoDB right? these are some DBMS applications and application program your own application right? uh, maybe the interface right? interface of the application uh, and uh, some other utility programs like um, uh, security programs, right? Something like that, right? Got it? So then let's move to the next slide, slide number 23. People, right? All users in the database system, right? Um, uh, so we have different users, right? In database, um, especially. The administrator. Administrator have the uh, the full access to uh, to uh, to access uh, the particular database, right? Uh, so they have uh, full freedom, full uh, accessibility to access the database. And uh, database designers, right? Means uh, who are the people who design this database, right? And um, basically the database administrator right as the system administrator and the database administrator sometimes they are all, uh, both are same and sometimes they may have different job roles um, system analysis and programmers right uh, means um, uh, the interface designers or that uh, the application developers right who should have an accessibility to access the same database without that credentials uh, they can't develop such application and end users mean managers clerks AN, right different job roles in that organization procedures uh, instructions and rules that govern the design and use of database system right who can access particular data, right? When, where, uh, how, who, right? right? Uh, we should to uh, define, right? Uh, how or where, uh, what, right? So that sort of uh, uh, instructions, right? So we have to predefine <coughs> into the database systems Right? before we are going to implement it into the real world right without defining them right without governing them right we can't uh, allow to access uh, or the uh, real domain right and data right the collection of facts stored in the database as we discussed earlier right whatever the records uh, we can keep them into the database right? that we call the database uh, data Let's move to the next slide, slide number 24. 
okay <coughs> so in this figure you can get an idea right in an organization right how uh, the operation get it done right from end users to the database right you can see um, supervisors and uh, uh, system administrators are there right and different uh, user categories like uh, design uh, database designers and programmers and users right who have the privileges to access the same database right so you can see right uh, uh, dbms right we have uh, a data, database administration right and as well as the data collection we have the hardware and software right using them right we can access the same data right but with different constraints right so that is the reality in all the organization right starting from a small organization to the large organization right uh, depend on the organization level right uh, these uh, benefits or else uh, the functionalities it might change but not drastically okay so let's move to the last slide so here in this presentation it described right uh, the recommended uh, uh, materials you should to access uh, uh, to refer our course right course 12 uh, the most recommended document is uh, fundamentals of uh, database systems right uh, so the sixth edition is uh, recommended right uh, even though if you have a uh, latest version right it doesn't matter you can uh, refer them right and a uh, few other materials also this display on the screen so you better to refer them at the meantime right so we can bind up this session and uh, next we can move into the new topic till then Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.